Okay, Lepto, boy, have you been beat to death with this. You know what to use, uh, you know, all of this sort of thing. So I don't know that I need to go through Lepto with you. Cows do die of Lepto. A bigger problem, perhaps, is Lepto-induced abortion. You'll see a lot of uh, this. When you have an abortion problem in a herd of cattle, Lepto is definitely on your rule-out list uh, to consider. And if you diagnose it in one, you probably have a herd situation, uh, and you may have to treat a large number of animals. <laughs> so, <clears throat> I was talking about um, bacterial diseases in cattle, and uh, of course, clostridial disease can occur in any species. Tetanus occurs in all of the species. Uh, and gangrene in various forms can occur, but cattle seem to have the, the predominant of the um, more specific clostridials and can have up to, I think it's seven different um, clostridial diseases. So this is in reference to them in general, just kind of using blackleg, which is Clostridium shovii, as one of the more common. Uh, <coughs> blackleg is the disease of calves uh, rather than adult cows. And it is really regrettable whenever you see it because it can be prevented by a vaccine for just pennies per animal. Uh, it's really uh, one of the signs of poor management in any cow-calf operation where they don't vaccinate the calves for lepto. Um, uh, all of these pretty much is more a disease of the toxin rather than the active infection per se. So the, the uh, um, vaccines really are more correctly toxoids uh, than Bactrians or um, uh, vaccines. But at any rate, when you do see it, it often is in multiple uh, young calves that are affected. And uh, oftentimes it's post-mortem, you find them dead. If you do run into it in the live animal, you'll know it pretty well. Uh, this is a gas producer, so uh, if you take your hand and put it along the, the <coughs> spine and just press and rub, it'll feel a lot like um, bubble wrap underneath it. Uh, very typical. Now, <coughs> when you get into uh, this in a herd, uh, the main thing is to go ahead and vaccinate immediately. Uh, <coughs> oftentimes, we go ahead in those calves and treat uh, prophylactically with procaine penicillin G for several days, trying to give uh, some time to allow the toxoid to kick in and also protect them in, in the meantime. Here is, is the treatment. Realize it's a guarded prognosis. Anytime you have one that has active disease, it's, it's pretty far along very often and you may not save them. If uh, <coughs> uh, I were to try, it would be high dose uh, penicillin G. In the individual valuable animal, I'd start off with crystalline penicillin, like potassium penicillin. Um, but regardless, uh, we're using procaine at pretty high doses at 30 to 60,000 units per kilogram. Uh, <coughs> and uh, that's a lot of procaine pen. So remember, you're going to have to spread this out over uh, multiple injection sites uh, to give that. In those affected animals, we will try things like fenestration and debridement. And fenestration is simply taking a scalpel and making stab incisions in the skin to allow the exudates and necrotic uh, uh, tissue fluids to leak out, to drain. Uh, but again, it's a rather guarded prognosis when you see uh, black leg. The same sorts of things apply to the other clostridia. Uh, the main difference being tetanus, we certainly uh, treat tetanus in all the species with high dose penicillin. There's some indication in man that metronidazole might be a better choice in um, uh, tetanus, but most of the, uh, uh, that activity again is the antitoxin in the face of the disease, the toxoid if you're trying to prevent it, and then supportive therapy, uh, muscle relaxants, that sort of thing with tetanus. <coughs> 